Hello, I'm Abia X Toy Cat. Today I have some great news for those of you who know or like the Hermitcraft SMB, because if you go onto the marketplace, you'll find there's not only four brand new paid add-ons, if I'm being honest, the laziest looking ones of the batch, but also there is the Hermitcraft Season 9 map available to download in the featured spot right here. Even better than being available to download, it's entirely free, and so as someone who doesn't follow SMP content, as someone who doesn't really think that Minecraft is a multiplayer game, to be totally honest with you, today I'm going to be checking out this world, having had literally zero exposure to it, and showing you how to do the same, because you literally hit the free button up here, and then you can download it and check it out like we're about to. Although it's 400 megabytes, so make sure you have the space first, I guess. <laughs> My download actually broke, so I'm going to have to hit this clear marketplace cache button, in case that happens to you. Pro tip happens a very, uh, a lot of the time if you have a lot of maps, and then we're gonna have to go back and download it again. And now here is the realm review for the world itself. It's not a realm and was mostly done on Java, I imagine, but let's review it entirely honestly, because I don't know who did what. We can just kind of look around and say what I genuinely believe as that, that the world as I see it. So do keep in mind that I would say I'm friendly with a couple of people who are hermits, uh, but I have no idea what they do on the server. So if I accidentally trash their builds and you're watching this, I'm very sorry. I'm just, I'm just here to uh, look at the world as I honestly see it. So first things first, let's pick up some armor. Uh, let's pick up some food, and let's pick up a book that will guide me around the world. Oh look, there's a set of coordinates in here. How very lovely. I could go through these, but I would much rather explore by hand. So, my first thought is the fact that, wow, look, there is a big crafting table well right here. I really like that. It's a community crafting center to craft together. Honestly, having all your crafting tables in one place seems like a very good idea, and having a big map at spawn is also wonderful. But what's weird about this is I've been told, that, you know, it says in the description, description that this is two years worth of work, the map of the area looks really, really insignificant. I could believe that this was a world that hadn't really been worked on all that much, to be honest. And, uh, you know, again, I, I'm sure I will be proven wrong. I can see a lot of those builds right now, but it is something to keep in mind. Oh, something else to keep in mind as we go up to the top of the world here and a big portal to another dimension, I can only assume, is the fact that because this is bedrock, this has 96 chunks of render distance, which I think is triple what was ever played with on Java. So there are probably some things that weren't built to have the vision that we're seeing right now, but it's fine. We can look through them anyway. But yeah, from up here you can see the vision is wild. Although that mountain is kind of bare, I still love what I'm looking at. Uh, you can see there are many, many more builds over there, and more importantly, there are builds everywhere except, I guess, in this direction. I also probably should mention that although I could put on deferred rendering or something else exclusive to Bedrock, I try to look around people's worlds in the same way that they made them, if at all possible. And so, with that said, keep in mind that things like this uh, will be missing sheep. I'm guessing they're meant to be there because they probably had to change a few things to have this stably released on the marketplace. There are all sorts of weird rules. In fact, the fact that they could release this for free means that the marketplace specifically made some form of good deal with them, which I hope they're happy with. But um, yeah, with that said, I'm excited to now peek around and see whatever this is. It's a house, but there's a never portal inside. And then if you look to the right, you'll see that there's a mushroom visible, that's kind of nice. It's a weird way to do windows, but I respect it, I guess. And then back here, there's a ladder, and that leads you to a furnace room, and then there's another ladder, uh, which leads you to, I'm guessing, the bed? No, okay, some some minecart stuff. <laughs> this is definitely a type of house that a person can choose to make, and this is definitely a type of window that a person can choose to have inside of their house. Okay, I have no idea what is happening with this. Is this meant to be a base, or is this meant to be like an old church that's just a portal to the nether? Because just around it, you can see everything's been slabbed up so much in a way that I'm not sure what I'm meant to feel, uh, but there is a lovely cave over there. I like the entrance to it. I'm guessing there are bees inside there, and and then there's this, which is absolutely wonderful to look at from the outside. I think that this is definitely like someone who likes building did this. Oh, it's a clock tower. It is meant to be a church, maybe to gods from another world. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be continuing to trying to find my way around this world exclusively just by pathfinding with the game itself. I'm sure that once you know a world, it gets a bit easier, but I love that every now and then when you're looking around, you find something that's meant to guide you. This is a very hard thing to do in a not subtle way, and I'm glad that they've kind of pulled it off right here. Speaking of pulled off, what does this sign say? Find me at the museum. Who am I finding at the museum? Is there anyone to find at the museum? Why are there all these gray banners over here? Is this a museum, do you think, by the way? Should we go inside? That is really cool if so. The Bamboo Lounge. 
Oh, is this where you go? <laughs> okay, I love this. Usually when people do chairs in Minecraft, they scale them way too small. I love this. You feel like you're a child going to the bar, which is, you know, I guess statistically potentially off. Uh, it, it's potentially, uh, you know, the case for you right here. Also, there's an Easter egg hunt. I love that they managed to put this in there. I'm guessing it's uh, custom art, but still, very, very fun that they've got these little details in the world. This is the sort of stuff that you, you see in a nice... Uh, long-term world and it's cool that a lot of people chipped in to make something like this It's not so cool to see an empty room here But I'm guessing it's just one of those projects that they kept saying they do later maybe got away from them I do love seeing the scale on these windows though again seeing minecraft builds in a slightly different scale is very interesting Objectively speaking now. Let's head over towards uh, There's a big mountain back there. I want to see I am very curious man. That is so far away the scale of these builds seems to increase as they get further away from spawn, which is often, you know, not the case. Often, uh, people kind of, like, lose some of the, the faith as they get further away. So it's cool to see that you get big Disney-style castles. I'm surprised it's not copyright infringement. And then also, the scale of that explosion must have been so hard to do. Like, in creative, this would be a nightmare. In survival, which I believe this world is meant to be, uh, this looks like it's just impossible to place in any meaningful way, uh, but it is very cool to look through. Also, there's a dirt block here. Wow. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I do like that when you put your world out there, you kind of are opening yourself to people seeing the minor mistakes they might not in videos. So it is cool to see something like that. A charming detail that reminds you it was handmade. Uh, and this is definitely the most insane thing I've ever seen, if it really is. Was, do you, do you, was this dug by hand by some person? I mean, even with, like, uh, a bunch of redstone machines, this feels like one of the wildest things I've ever laid eyes on. I've heard that, um, so again, I, I, I kind of am quite insulated from the rest of YouTube, um, in, in, in quite a few ways. Like, again, I, in, in, in ways that I'm, like, often quite happy for when crazy stuff goes down and people say, oh, it's all Minecraft YouTubers that are terrible, whatever, whatever's going on. But one of the things, one of the discourses that many, uh, YouTubers are currently going through is, like, yeah, when a build takes you months to make and then pays off in one video, it just is, isn't worth it and it feels like you have to cheat to make it, etc. When you look at a build like this, if you were to try and like make something similar, I don't know how you would do so in any reasonable time frame. Look at this! It is so big. It's bigger than the number of blocks you can place in like several commands. Uh, I'm guessing, is this the Undertale? Uh, the lamb god, right? It's, uh, like, it's, I, I forget her name, but the mother at the start of the game. I think it is. I, I'm fairly sure that's what I'm seeing. And, uh, then in the middle here, we've got, I'm guessing, a giant never portal farm. Or maybe it's just a set of never portals. Honestly, looking around this is just making me go, what the heck am I seeing? And I do not know how, even a group of people, I could not coordinate a team of 20 Minecraft players to get this done if I tried. And so the fact that they managed to do that while also managing to make content, actually impressive. I was worried I'd go into this looking too cynical because again, I, I think multiplayer Minecraft is not necessarily my thing. Maybe that's like a, a control issue that I have uh, with how worlds should be done, etc. But also, what the heck have I just walked into? Did someone, did I do this? I swear I didn't try to. I do want to know what's inside this castle, but I'm mostly just hoping there's a bed, by the way. Okay, I didn't see any beds, but I see this beacon over here, and so that's a sign that maybe... Ah, yes, people were sleeping here for their building, <laughs> which they did far too much of, by the way. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say, I like the idea of what I'm looking at right here. I like that it's whimsical, but I just feel like anything you put next to this giant hole is going to look tiny and wrong by comparison. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and say is not my favorite build. My, I, I like the scale and the difference between this and the volcano in terms of how they're done. And now everything else I look at looks like it's just casually made by one person in the corner sometime. Honestly, maybe that, and maybe that is the point about mega builds right there, is that when you see something that big, the only thing that can compete is something bigger or at least, if you want to go at least match it, you go equally as big. But when you see something like this, it's objectively so cool. If I'd have seen this first, I'd have said, whoa, how did they do that? And now I go, well, I mean, have you seen the hole over there? Or the mountain over there? I, it's not that big by comparison, is it? It is kind of fun to fly around this world because you don't know the scale of a building until you get close to it. This is objectively huge for a base or a house or whatever it's meant to be. Uh, and when you compare it to the ones nearby, you can see that it is almost kind of overshadowing them all. But at the same time, 
It's big, yeah, like it's 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 nice. But is it as nice as this life-size pinball machine? You know how I said I liked the playing with perspectives earlier? This plays with perspectives to a whole nother level. You get to be a pin pong, ping, a ping pong, sorry, you get to be a pinball ball. Is it called a pinball ball or is it just a pinball? Do you play pinball with the pinball or does the pinball ball hit the pins? Or is it just a ball and then you hit it with the pins and that's the pinball? I've never, I, I've never had to know the answers to these questions, but looking around one of these on these scales really reminds me of like that Sonic the Hedgehog level in uh, Sonic Heroes, and it's wild to see it created right here. Absolutely nutty that you could, or maybe the uh, the Super Mario Sunshine level where you're in one of these two. The level of shulker boxes required to make this, the amount of scaffolding alone really does show the amount of effort you have to put into these projects, but also I can see the appeal that like, honestly, it must pay off a little bit more when you're on a server and immediately not only can you and your audience look at things, which I think is why some YouTubers maybe have the motivation to build things that you might not is because they know there's some people who might care about it. But having a lot of people who maybe are your friends or at least colleagues, um, you know, look at something and go, oh, what did you do there? That's kind of cool, right? You know what else is kind of cool? Having a base on a floating island. Oh yeah, I like this, got some cherry gr Honestly, this is kind of cool. This is just at the edge of human scale, I think. Like the sort of thing that a viewer might want to build themselves, which is the reason I would say I'm against the idea of doing massive, ridiculous projects. They are fun as a one-off, but because there are thousands of YouTubers, everyone trying to one-up each other, means you stop doing projects which your viewers can reasonably look at and say they'll one day do. This honestly is very achievable. It, it feels like it would take you a really hard week of gathering the right resources and trying to put it together and, you know, putting the lovely details on it might take you another few weeks, but you'd feel like this is something you could one day accomplish. Whereas I look at that pinball machine and go, hoo, hoo, hoo. good thing I'm not going anywhere near that. It's very cute that there's a tough golem here saying GG sniff. You know, the, the tough golem might be sad that he's not in the game yet, but maybe one day he'll be added we could say. Uh, but yeah, looking around this world, I would say the one thing that is clear is it is bigger than I have imagined. Looking around it, even when flying around with an Elytra and fireworks, it makes me realize one of the fundamental problems in very big worlds, maybe one of the reasons that it has to be reset so often, and that is because when you have so many people who are good at their craft, you fill up space really quickly. I've always had this attitude of when you have a long-term survival world, Resetting it is the worst thing you could do. You lose all of this history. But if you're doing a world with, uh, you know, friends and strangers and the goal is to uh, show that world off uh, to other people almost as much as or more so uh, than it is to make one for yourself, then maybe at that point it does make sense to reset the world so that those people can feel like they followed the journey from the beginning. It kind of feels like, you know, like ending a TV show and starting another one. I love watching, you know, I, I feel like uh, there are so many shows that I wish could have just another season, but the fact that there are so many people watching new shows proves that, yeah, people get bored of the same thing after a while. People, um, at the very least, they're more excited by a new thing. And a part of me says that's sad. Why are the heads all over this farm? A part of me says that's sad. And that part of me says, uh, you know, apparently that uh, I see I, I see that there is like a creative maximum that you can achieve with this What am I walking into? It feels like a horror. Oh, it's trick-or-treat. Okay, that's fun So someone set that up for the whole server to play It is a very very wholesome thing I also see why this would encourage people to want to play with their friends But also at the same time the one thing this has going that most other SMPs don't is the continual archiving and the fact that one day you can go back to all of those old builds. Whereas I feel like the problem with resetting a multiplayer server otherwise is you'll lose, you know, like most players won't have access to that. And so hopefully, um, you know, this very brief tour of the server has given you one thing, which is that, yeah, this being archived forever is great for those who have some connection to the series, mostly those who played in it. Uh, but if you are going to run an SMP, make sure that you can do something similar, even if it is only six people who care. Having that be available forever is something you might appreciate in the future. By the way, I just want to say, uh, yeah, scale of this was ridiculous in places, but it was a fairly nice world. It did feel a bit incongruent in some ways, but it's surprisingly, you know, despite that, the places where it did fit together, I'm pleasantly surprised by given I think it's over 20 people who work on this doing different things. And there is a quality difference from next to spawn to away from spawn, sure. But I think it's a nice thing regardless. Maybe you do too. Or maybe you don't. Either case, I hope you will enjoy today's video. I'm going to go up the funicular over there before we go. 
So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I came up here and as it turns out, there's way more on top of these mountains. Uh, this is so, so high up in the world. And so to build a base like this with a giant steam train, I like it. It's really charming. Speaking of charming, there's a big Elytra hole we have to go through. It's begging me to. Yay, I did some. No, no, there's more over here. This is eight. Oh, it's an Elytra course. See, that's so, so cool to have stuff like this just blended into a world is a lot of fun and is one of the reasons why maybe, just maybe, you might enjoy checking out this world, especially if you have some connection to it. Otherwise, um, in case you are curious, uh, if like other YouTuber worlds be going out on there, again, it is very, very uh, hard to get Minecraft worlds in the marketplace and doing it for free, I believe, is only with very special uh, permission and approval. So yeah, the fact that this happened is great, but I also would say, uh, you know, there's a lot of other YouTubers with famous worlds uh, that might, uh, you might have a harder time finding on the marketplace, just in case you're curious. I'm saying that as someone who obviously has their world on the marketplace, uh, but that is like, uh, again, it's, uh, it's something that I coincidentally get to do by virtue of owning my own marketplace team, mostly for that reason. Anyway, with that said, thank you for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>